Welcome to worship here in Bothwell Parish Church. Wherever you join us from this day, may you know the peace and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin with our call to worship, which says this. Christ is risen and greets us with peace. The peace of Christ is among us indeed. We are witnesses of God's glory and steadfast love. The transforming love of Christ is among us indeed. So come, let us worship God as we turn our hearts to him now in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the light of your love shines on, illuminating the world today and reminding us that you are very present. As the bewildered disciples pondered the stories of your appearance, you penetrated the darkness of their fear and doubt with your word of peace. You showed them the appalling marks of evil pierced on your hands and feet. Marks which you bore for our freedom as you opened their minds to understand why you had to go through the agony of the cross for them and for us. Lord Jesus Christ, as we come to worship you, we ask that you would increase our understanding and open our minds and hearts to receive you this day, Lord. Speak your word of peace to us and let your love shine brightly in all areas of our lives, especially those areas which today we struggle to see you through the darkness of despair. Forgive us, Lord, when we try to extinguish your light of peace in the world. Forgive us when our faith is weak and as we walk away from you. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins we bring to you now in the silence. Come to us now saying the words you have uttered through the millennia, saying, go, your sins are forgiven. So be with us as we journey through our time together. Still our hearts with your peace as we say the words you taught us to say, saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen <laughs> Thank you. 
Psalm 4, an evening prayer for help. Answer me when I pray, O God, my defender. When I was in trouble, you helped me. Be kind to me now and hear my prayer. How long will you people insult me? How long will you love what is worthless and go after what is false? Remember that the Lord has chosen the righteous for his own, and he hears me when I call to him. Tremble with fear and stop sinning. Think deeply about this when you lie in silence on your beds. Offer the right sacrifices to the Lord and put your trust in him. There are many who pray, give us more blessings, O Lord, look on us with kindness. But the joy that you have given me is more than they will ever have with all their corn and wine. When I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. You alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. St Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. Jesus appears to his disciples. While the two were telling them this, suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were terrified, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you alarmed? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. He said this and showed them his hands and feet. They still could not believe. They were so full of joy and wonder. So he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of cooked fish, which he took and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms, had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name, the message about repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Thanks be to God. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Come, let us pray. For God, wherever you find us this day, bless us now. Open our eyes and open our ears to your glory. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts. Amen. This week we met as a Kirk session via Zoom. And instead of dealing with the normal business of the month, we devoted the majority of the meeting to looking at our finances in detail with the help of the finance team. They guided us through the work that they have been putting in over the last few months to allow us to have a better understanding, a better grip on our finances as a congregation. This in turn allows us to plan better for the year ahead. Instead of walking into the mist of the unknown, we now have a clear view through the fog of what lies ahead for us. During the meeting, we looked at the situation we faced as we started the year back in January 
and we looked at where we are now having just finished March. Due to the generosity of those who have increased their monthly giving or set up a standing order perhaps for the first time, our monthly giving as a congregation has increased by 20%, halfway to the increase of 40% that we set at the beginning of the year, which will allow us to end 2021 on an even keel as a congregation financially. We have in the past three months made significant progress, but it was a clear reminder that we're not yet out of the woods and there's still an awful lot of work still to do. As we journeyed through the evening and as we discussed the situation that we faced, it was becoming abundantly clear that one thing kept coming up time and time again. And that was the power of stories. The power of stories. Here in Bothwell Parish Church, we have had a story written for us of being a very wealthy congregation. A story that has been imagined due to the sheer size and beauty of this church, which has over the years been so well maintained and cared for by both the property committee now and those in the past. It's a story which has grown due to the fact that we are located in a town which has the image of being a place where only those with money are able to live. What if I, though, was to tell you a different story? A story that shows that part of our parish is in the top 30% of Scottish index for multiple deprivation. A story of how we were asked to set up a food bank and the surprise, disbelief and sadness of the volunteers when they saw some of the houses that they were delivering food parcels to. It was a story which they had not yet read and through no fault of their own had been able to ignore and only now they were turning the page onto the first chapter of this story. What if I was to tell you the story of the church which has been written for us is wrong? That despite our image, the truth is that we are still facing a deficit in our end of year accounts. We don't have a pot of money that we are sitting on. And the truth is our future will only be guaranteed by the hard work of each and every one of us as we share the true story, the one that we have written with one another and with our community. Because we all need to share the story of this place that we get the privilege to be guardians of today. A story that goes beyond our four walls as we begin to tell the story of our whole community. Stories have the power to open our eyes to the truth. And they have the ability to transport us places where we could never imagine. Stories have a power that statistics on a page will never be able to compete with. We only need to read a story to a young child and live with them in that moment as they drag us into their imaginary world, as they ask us searching, wonderful questions as they remind us of the power that stories hold. Today in our Gospel reading, we heard Luke share a story with us, an unimaginable story for many of those present at the time, having just watched their Messiah a few days earlier die the horrific, the horrific death on the cross. Luke's story illuminates a problem that is over 2,000 years old, that is not always easy to believe in the risen Lord Jesus, not then and not now. Ultimately, it is something that can only be grasped and understood through the faith that Jesus himself awakens in us, through our relationship with him. 
if we never experience within ourselves the peace and joy that Jesus fills us with, it will be difficult to find proof of his resurrection from any other source. It is precisely for this reason that I believe that Luke shared this account with us. Because Luke wants to encourage us that belief is not easy, but that we should not give up. As this group of disciples met together, there was excitement, there was wonder, and there was confusion in equal measure. No doubt there were the two disciples who were still trying to catch their breath and narrate the story of how they recognized Jesus when sitting at the table and eating with him at Emmaus. And how they walked the road together from Jerusalem, not knowing who this stranger was. Perhaps they shared how it was only when he broke the bread and passed it to them that they saw the marks of the crucifixion on his hands and how in that moment before he disappeared their eyes were suddenly opened. No doubt the women were there once again sharing their experience at the tomb with the angel and the words that he shared with them, saying, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. As they urged the others to believe them and the two disciples who had just come in from Emmaus, perhaps Peter sat there quietly, having run to the tomb himself to see the angel, only to find the linen and the silence of wonder at the empty tomb, yet still filled with amazement at what must have happened. And yet the majority present sit and wonder, having had no experience yet of the risen Messiah themselves. And perhaps they find themselves doubting and not sure what to make of it all. It is into this place of confusion, of wonder and excitement that Jesus appears and said to them, Peace be with you. Luke's account is realistic. It doesn't try to paper over the cracks, but instead lays them open for all to see. The appearance of Jesus and that group of disciples who had walked with Jesus only days before the crucifixion does not transform them instantaneously. Some become afraid and think they are seeing a ghost. All kinds of doubts come to the surface of their lives in that moment. We read that despite hearing him speak to them, some are still filled with disbelief that Jesus was risen and there with them in that moment because they were stunned and left wondering. And so I wonder if as Jesus ate the fish they were transformed, transported back to that moment that Jesus fed 5,000 people with just two fish and five loaves that moment when their eyes were opened to the truth of who Jesus was. How like the disciples we are today. Faith in the risen Jesus has not come to us in a fixed or automatic manner. It is not easy to comprehend and often begins to form in our hearts in a small and fragile way. It grows in the midst of doubts and questions as we ask, is this true? That something so great and wonderful could possibly be real? Luke's account reminds us of how we are able to share our story and how in doing so our story has the possibility to change us and those around us. For the risen Christ makes himself known to us in ways both large and small. As people of faith, as people of faith, we are to be witnesses to Christ's presence among us. And we're to do so in our words and in our deeds. 
because our faith demands nothing less. And it is in the telling and the receiving of our story that our eyes are opened to the truth and to the glory of the risen Christ. We have our story to tell today. A story of those who came before us. A story of the faith which seems unimaginable at times. A story of the risen Lord still present in our midst as he sows seeds of hope in the ashes of despair. A story of a brighter future for us here in Bothwell Parish Church. A story of a brighter future in our world in general. And so Christ invites us to tell our story today because it is in the telling and receiving of our story of faith that we become witnesses to the risen Lord. Amen. And thanks be to God. come now to our time of prayer and you're invited to respond when I say Lord hear our prayer with the words grant us your peace to come let us pray God of peace you come to us in unexpected places in a crowded room in a journey on a dusty road in conversation and in the stillness. You come in the midst of our doubt, our fear, our sorrow. You come in the power of the resurrection, 
that no pain and suffering is unknown to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us your peace. God of peace, you bring and give to us a peace that passes all understanding. We pray for the places in the world where there is no peace, for countries torn by war, by refugees seeking homes, prisoners facing torture, spouses and families facing abuse. We ask that they may know your deep peace today. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us your peace. Lord God, bring peace today. Peace to the tensions and conflicts within us, to the regrets, the failures, the broken relationships, the lost friendships. We pray today for all who are restless, with regret, with sadness and with broken hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us your peace. We pray today for all who are alone, for all who feel unseen, for all who hide their pain from the world and those whom they love. And we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us your peace. Lord, you bring us peace. And we pray today that we too may become peacemakers in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wherever you are today, go into God's creation with peace. Go with the blessing of Christ who invites us to tell the story of his life, of his love, and of his forgiveness. So go with the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>